Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 10 of my linear algebra tutorial series. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to talk about cross product and normal vectors and a whole bunch more, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so as I said in the last part of the tutorial, the cross product of two vectors is another vector that is at right angles to both. So let's draw in here two vectors. So we have a vector going in this direction and another vector going in that direction. And let's label this one as B and this one as A. Well then in that situation, we would have another vector. This would be our normal or the cross product of both of those vectors. And you can see here that maybe confusingly, it is labeled with an X, okay? So if we have two vectors on a plane, of course, this new vector that is formed from the cross product of those two vectors is our normal vector. And this can be diagrammed as such. And we calculate it with what is called a determinant. And I will cover determinants a lot more, but I'm gonna give you the basis of how they work now. Across the top, we are going to list the basis vectors. And then we put the components, AX, AY, AZ, and BX, BY, and BZ of the other vectors. Then whenever we perform this calculation, this cross product of A and B, we will take I, determinant, and then the way the determinant basically works is, Wherever the determinants row and columns are, so here and here, we are going to create a new matrix based off of what is not crossed off. So we are going to use the values A, Y, A, Z, B, Y, and B, Z. And we basically just draw those in exactly as they are right there. B, Y, and B, Z. We are also going to use a template to determine the signs. And this template is basically, it's very easy to memorize. You're going to have a plus, a minus, and a plus. A minus here, a plus here, a minus here, a plus here, and another minus, and a plus. So basically the positive values are going to make an X in the middle, and the negatives make a diamond. So. In this situation, I is positive, and J is going to be negative. And now, we're not going to use anything in the column with J. So we're going to take AX, AZ, BX, and BZ. And then what is K going to be? It's going to be positive because of our template over here. So this is going to be positive. Don't worry if this is in any way confusing, it will become very clear whenever I do an example. So what are we gonna have here? AX, AY, BX, BY. This then is going to translate down into the formula we're going to be using to find our normal. And that formula is going to be I, a Y, this is the how you calculate the cross product, B Z minus A Z times B Y. And where do those come from? A Y B Z, you multiply those, and then you subtract from it A Z times B Y. And you're gonna do that again with this, and again with this, okay? So we will subtract in this situation J, and then we will multiply AX times BZ minus AZ times BX and then plus K AX times BY minus AY times BX and it fit. So let's do a real example so this all makes 100% sense. All right, so let's say we have vector A, and what we're doing here is calculating the cross product or the normal vector. So let's have it be one and zero and four, and then we'll have B be equal to, again, this is a B, B vector, 
negative 3, 1, and 3. So we just plug it into our formula we have here, and we find that nx is going to be equal to a y b z minus a z b y, which is going to end up being equal to 0 times 3 minus 4 times 1, or negative 4. Let's go and find ny. That is going to end up being equal to az bx minus ax bz. And the reason why is because of the negative sign on j, the reason those flipped. And this is going to be equal to 4 times negative 3 minus 1 times 3, which is equal to negative 15. And then we can calculate nz. And that is going to be AX times BY minus AY times BX, which is equal to 1 times 1 minus 0 times negative 3. And that is going to end up being equal to, of course, 1. So that means that our normal vector is going to be equal to negative 4 negative 15 and 1. All right, so pretty easy stuff. Now what I want to do is talk about the right hand rule because what it's going to do is it's going to tell us in which direction this normal vector is going to point. So if you can point your index finger to vector A and your middle finger to B, then your thumb will tell you the direction the normal will point. So let's go back and use our plane equation. So let's do x1 minus xo plus by1 minus y0 plus cz1 minus z0 equal to 0. And let's say that we have vectors that are going to Let's go and label this down here, this coordinate system. Let's say y is down here and x is right here. Let's say that we have a vector a, which is 104. And we have a vector b, which is negative 3, 1, and 3. And then we have our normal. And it is, if you can remember from previous, negative 4, negative 15, and 4. Well, let's go and approximately draw in what A would look like. So let's say that A is going from the origin and coming approximately up into this area right here. So this is going to be A. And then let's say that B is coming up here and it's going approximately in this direction. Well, if you use your right hand rule and you point your index finger towards A and your middle finger towards B, you can see that the normal is going to be pointing pretty much in this direction right here. So this would represent our normal or our cross product of A and B. And just for some extra practice, let's go and figure out, we got our normal here, so the negative four X plus three minus 15 Y minus one, and I'm using vector B here to calculate this. Remember all we need is the normal, which is where this value comes from and this value and the next value I'm gonna put down along with a single point on the plane. Plus, and this is going to be, or our normal is one. Why did you let me make that mistake, internet? So this is one, sorry about that. And this would be plus and I could just do one times z minus 3 is equal to 0, and this will be negative 4x minus 12 minus 15y plus 15 plus z minus 3 is equal to 0, negative 4x minus 15y plus z 
And then we can have da 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 da. Well, that actually ends up being equal to zero. All right, well, that's interesting. And the last thing we could do here is we could calculate the magnitude of our normal here, which is going to end up being equal to negative 4 squared plus negative 15 squared plus 1 squared. So we'll just leave it 1, which of course is going to be 16 plus 2, 2, 5 plus 1, square root of that, square root of 242, which is approximately equal to 15.55. All right, so there you go, cross product, right hand rule, drawing in planes and doing all kinds of other crazy stuff. Hopefully you found that interesting as well as informative. And like always, please leave your questions and comments down below. Otherwise, till next time.